YouTube, Edgar here, and welcome to Artifexy, and here you will learn everything you ever wanted to know about world building, and then some. Hot Jupiters are a class of extrasolar giant planets first discovered in 1995. They tend to be commonly found around F and G type stars, less commonly around K type stars, and rarely about small red dwarf M type stars. We call them Hot Jupiters because they tend to have masses close to or exceeding that of Jupiters, and orbit their host stars very close in, thus have incredibly high surface temperatures in the order of several thousand degrees Kelvin. However, they do tend to be slightly less dense than Jupiter. Jupiter's year is about 12 Earth years long, but in extreme cases these fireballs can zip around their parent stars in under a week. It's impossible for gas giants to form so close to their parent stars, so it's thought that these hot Jupiters formed out beyond the frost lines and migrated inwards into their nearly circular close-in orbits. As a result, they are unlikely to have moons and will certainly be tidally locked. Tidally locked planets always present the same face to their parent star, so they have a permanent day side and a permanent night side. Now usually that would mean insanely high temperatures on the day side and insanely low temperatures on the night side, but high winds on these hot Jupiters help distribute the heat around the planet, resulting in a relatively low temperature difference between the two sides. Emphasis on relative here. WASP 43b has a 1800 degree Kelvin day side and a somewhat chilly 800 degree Kelvin night side. It was long thought that the inward migration of a Jupiter mass planet would wreak havoc on any planetary system, but recent computer simulations have shown that terrestrial planets of two Earth masses could form in the habitable zone after a hot Jupiter passed through the system and stabilized at 0.1 AU. What's intriguing is that these post hot Jupiter worlds tended to be very water rich. Perhaps more intriguing is that half of all hot Jupiters orbit in a retrograde motion relative to their parent star, and we don't really know why. Hot Neptunes are identical to hot Jupiters only with masses and compositions comparable to Neptune and Uranus. Hot Saturns though are a little bit different, we call them puffy giants. Puffy giants are defined as being low density, large radius planets. Like hot Jupiters, puffy giants orbit close to their star and as a result they have their atmospheres inflated by the star's heat, which gives them their puffy complexion. It's thought that only planets under two Jupiter masses can go puffy. Any higher and a planet's stronger gravity will crush it down to and maintain it at one Jupiter radius. Take home here is that planets more massive than Jupiter will probably not be much larger than Jupiter. About 15% of the known extrasolar planets orbit closer than 0.1 AU from their parent star. However, gas giants with orbits less than 3 days or 0.04 AU are extremely rare, suggesting that 0.04 AU may be a critical distance inside of which we are unlikely to find giant gaseous planets. What we may find here is a new class of planet made of the residual cores of former hot Jupiters, so-called Chthonian planets. Let's look at HD 209458b. It's a hot Jupiter that straddles this critical limit with its 3.5 day orbit. However, unlike the puffy giants, its atmosphere isn't being inflated, rather it's being lost through hydrodynamic escape. That is, the intense radiation of its parent star is stripping it of its gaseous envelope and leaving a trail of evaporated gas in its orbital wake. Once all the gas is gone, we're left with just a rocky core, hence why we find hardly any gaseous planets with orbits of less than 3 days. They've all evaporated away. Korot 7b orbits its host star every 20 hours, well inside our critical 3 day limit, so it could be classed a Chthonian planet. However, given the young age of the Korot 7 system, scientists think it probably isn't a dead gas giant, rather it is, and always has been, a true rocky world. Stripping a gas giant of all its gas takes a long, long time, and Korot 7 just hasn't been around that long. Anyways, the term Chthonian planet is hypothetical and tenuous at best. I mean, how do you tell the difference between a rocky terrestrial world and a long dead gas giant if they essentially look the same? All planets in our solar system orbit on nearly circular orbits. A giant planet with an orbital eccentricity of 0.1 or greater is classed an eccentric Jupiter. Remember, zero is a perfect circle and one is a straight line. 7% of all stars have at least one eccentric Jupiter and the average eccentricity of those with orbital periods greater than 5 days is roughly 0.23. To put that in context, Pluto has an orbital eccentricity of 0.24. Giant planets with an orbital eccentricity of 0. 
1.6 or greater, gravitationally speaking, have a devastating effect on their systems, and it's unlikely rocky worlds could persist in such an environment. However, at lower eccentricities, rocky worlds may well be viable, and computer simulations have shown that they have tended to be much drier worlds than Earth. HD 20782b is an eccentric Jupiter with an orbital eccentricity of 0.97. Bearing in mind that one is a straight line, that figure is pretty mind-blowing. Over the course of its 500-day year, its distance from its parent star goes from 15 million kilometers all the way up to 400 million kilometers. We think of gas giants as being very large, massive worlds, but can gas giants be tiny? Yes, indeed they can. We call them gas dwarfs. Kepler-11f is a good example. Its mass is about two times that of Earth's, but its density is comparable to Saturn, so we think it's made of a small rocky core surrounded by a liquid ocean and a thick hydrogen and helium atmosphere. These worlds are prone to atmospheric loss through hydrodynamic escape and stellar winds, and as a result are usually found far out in their systems, well out of harm's way. On the flip side, we have found giant planets much more massive than Jupiter and have dubbed them Super Jupiters. Kappa Andromeda b at 12.8 Jupiter masses is a particularly massive example of a Super Jupiter, and probably one of the most massive we'll ever find, given that at 13 Jupiter masses, a planet technically is capable of deuterium fusion, and so would have to be classed a brown dwarf. And hey, there you have it, everything you ever wanted to know about extrasolar gas giants, and then some. Guys, if you like what you see here in Artifact Scene, click the links in the description to find me on Facebook and Twitter. And if you're interested, hit like and subscribe for more awesome science-based world building. Thank you all so much for watching. Edgar out.